Imagine you are a West Coast entrepreneur. You have built a number of successful internet companies in California. After 10 years, you return back home. That was me a couple of years ago. It felt like victory. It felt like coming home with this big bag of gold from the gold rush. West Coast entrepreneur, here I come. Back in the Netherlands, I tried to set up a new business and failed miserably. Desperately, I tried to look for a new job. And when I finally found one, working for a normal boss, which I hadn't done for a long time, it didn't take long before I was fired. To make things even worse, I turned 40. <laughs> At that point in time, I had to ask myself some fundamental questions. Is there more in life than making money? What could I contribute to society? And also, on a more personal level, what were my most happy moments? And I realized my most happy moments were when I was a little boy and I biked from home to school for the woods. And I can still vividly remember the smell of the fresh needle pines in the morning, the squirrels running over the bike path, taking in the fresh, cold air. And now I'm reliving this experience with my old kids when I spend time in nature. And I have a confession to make. I've fallen in love with nature. I feel part of it. I want to protect it, and I want to preserve it for the next generations. Well, but I'm an entrepreneur, so what do I do? I'm not a politician, I'm not an activist. I only know about building companies, mostly internet companies on the West Coast. I know how to reach impact with limited resources. But how could I get this abstract vision, this dream, turn into reality? So I embarked on a journey. I started to give free advice to young entrepreneurs at the university. I reconnected with my alma mater in Delft and became one of their entrepreneurs in residence. I learned about new concepts, movements, and I was inspired by the passion, but also by the sense of purpose of the next generation. One of the people I met was Willem. So Willem had just graduated with a physics degree and showed me this tiny-sized, Lego-sized window. It was completely transparent, yet it produced electricity. He called it the power window. And as opposed to taking a normal job, he wanted to take this innovation, what he called innovation without compromise to market. I was deeply impressed. If Willem could, I should at least try. One of the big themes that really resonated with me was the concept of the circular economy. I got hooked and started to ask myself, how can I breathe life in this too abstract concept? How can I get the circular economy turning, first for myself, then for my company, and finally for society? Circular economy sounds very complicated. And frankly, I didn't know what it meant. So let me try to explain. Circular economy is based on the principles that modern nature has used for millions and millions of years. 
It's very new, but at the same time, very old way of looking at the world. However, many of us seem to have forgotten about it because we're, we're living in an age that's driven by power, profit, and consumption. Circular economy is not only based on nature. It also makes economic sense. There is no waste. Everything is used. It's like a tree. A tree grows, branches, leaves. The leaves fall down, they fall on the ground, the ground becomes soil, and the soil gives life to new trees. Now believe me, I'm not a tree hugger, or I believe a realistic activist. I'm an entrepreneur, and I, I, I want to make money. So what do I do? And I started to ask myself, can we apply these same principles to economy? What if we could move our current linear economy, a model where we make we take, um, we throw away all the precious resources and at the same time we heat up our precious earth. What if we could find a way to live in harmony again so human beings and the planet can live together without destroying it? That's why I decided to join a company. The company recycles tires. Passenger car tires, truck tires, waste tires. It's located 20 miles from here, in the beautiful place of Nederweert. And we don't see waste, we see resources. And believe me, for me that was quite a stretch. I recall seeing the waving palm trees from my California office. Now I see big piles of tires, and they're very black. With our technology and approach, we save two big problems at the same time. The first problem is that each year, more than one billion tires reach the end of their life. Think about that. One billion tires. A lot of these tires are landfilled or even worse, burned, creating massive amounts of CO2 emissions and pollution. The second problem is in the consumption. Because what happens is, especially in Africa, a lot of malaria mosquitoes breed in the tires, creating all kinds of horrible diseases. Another problem is in the production of the tires. A big component of a tire is a black powder called carbon black. I never heard about it, but it's everywhere. It's in this screen, it's in this pen, it's in a lot of black clothes, it's in this ink over there, and in the rubber. But 70% goes into tires. And then what happens? They get burned. We're throwing away a wallet with money still in it. It's crazy. So our company found a circular solution to this problem. So we start with the tires, we take the steel out, we harvest the carbon black, which can be reused for new tires, paint or ink. And for each installation we build, we save more CO2 than one million trees can consume. And we won't stop with one installation. There's enough tires in the world to build more than a thousand of them, saving almost one billion trees. So one of the things I realized in this journey that if you work on something you really care about, you don't have to push yourself. The vision pulls you. The company
company I'm leading is a classic example of the circular economy. But there are many different flavors. Our company basically does recycling, reuse materials and create value. Frankly, I like the word upcycling better. Because what we do is we take the materials and we bring them at a higher quality level so we can recycle them over and over or upcycle them. But there are many other flavors of the um, uh, of the um, there are many many other flavors of the circular economy. So let me go through a couple of them. <clears throat> a good way to think about different types of circular economy is to think about all the stuff in our lives. The food we eat, the cars we drive, the homes we live in. And there are several strategies to deal with this stuff. But let's make it a little practical. What can you do? How can you get your own circular economy turning? And let's make it very, very practical. The first is just to avoid stuff. Do we need the latest toy? Do we have to make the trip to the US? Or even better, is there a digital alternative? Actually, a great example is this TED Talk. First of all, thanks all of you for being here. And at the same time, this is taped, so millions and millions of people can watch it. Well, at least I hope so. <laughs> Let me ask you guys a question. Who has used Spotify or Airbnb in this room? Please raise your hands. Well, congratulations. You are already part of the circular economy. And the reason for that is that you've used a service that promotes the more effective use of resources. Sharing. By sharing a car, music, a home, you use it much more effectively. And what's actually really interesting about this, as we move from owning physical products to using the service, is that it completely turns the business model. Say I'm a seller. Now I want the product to last, as opposed to shipping and replacing as many units as possible. So let me give a really practical example. That's actually not that, not that far away. Cars. Cars are used between 5 and 10% of their time. The rest of the time, they sit idle. Does that make sense? So Elon Musk of Tesla recently predicted that once the Teslas become fully self-driving, they will make money for their owners while they're asleep. Again, it makes complete economic sense. So, how do we take it from here? Well, there are no one-size-fits-all solutions. There's no quick fixes. But I believe in doing, and I believe in learning to do things together. Business can be an important driver for good. Capitalism is a mighty force. Let's use it the right way. Let's make the circular economy happen. And for this, we all need to work together. Businesses, governments, universities, NGOs. But maybe most importantly, you all the consumers. So, I invite you to experiment, to fail, and try again. Experiment, fail, and try again. And those that fail the most have tried the most. And often, our biggest regrets and are not our actions, but they're the things we did not do, our inactions. 
And getting ahead, the secret to that is often how to get started. And saving our planet is way too important not to try. Thank you.